This is the refueling and maintenance facility I am building on my layout at the west end of Green River Yard. I've used Snyder fuel cranes and a Tomix engine house for this facility. I've painted the fuel cranes, and as you can see from the photo insert, I've modified the Tomix engine house to more closely resemble the prototype, especially the roof, windows, and paint scheme. Now let me show you two photos of the prototype. This is the refueling area at Green River, Wyoming. You can also see the maintenance facility in the background just to the left of center. And here's a close-up view of the maintenance facility. I've applied blue painter's tape to protect the track and surrounding area. I'm using spackling paste to pave the area. Spackling paste seems to work better than joint compound for a project like this. It is drier than joint compound and holds its form better as it dries completely. I will apply a little water to the spackling paste with a spatula to help smooth it out, reducing or even eliminating altogether the need to sand the paved area after it dries. I'm using a spatula or putty knife to apply the spackling paste as the most important tool for this project. This looks like something my dentist would use, but it's actually an artist's tool. Of course, there's an ever-present and always useful X-Acto knife. I'm using this old Bright Boy to remove spackling paste and paint from the tops of the rails in this project. Of course, you need a brush for painting the pavement. And lastly, there's fine sandpaper for sanding the pavement after the spackling paste dries. Hopefully, I won't have to use this sandpaper at all if I can smooth out the spackling paste as I'm applying it. All right, it's time to apply the spackling paste. Don't worry about those blobs of spackling paste along the front edge of the project. They will be removed as I lift up the blue painter's tape. Now I'm applying a little water with the spatula to smooth out the spackling paste so that I won't have to sand the spackling paste very much, if at all, after it dries. Okay, it's only been a few minutes since I applied the spackling paste and it's still wet. But I'm going to go ahead and remove the blue painter's tape now. I find it better to remove the tape before the spackling paste hardens. Don't worry, the spackling paste will hold its shape as I remove the tape. This is also a good time to run an old freight car on the track where you've applied spackling paste between the rails to make sure the flangeways are open and deep enough. After removing the painter's tape, I will allow the spackling to dry overnight before sanding it if I need to, and then paint it.
All right, the spackling paste has hardened overnight. I didn't need to do very much sanding. I've already painted the pavement with Woodland Scenic's cement top coat and it has dried thoroughly. Now I'm going to apply a thin wash to weather the pavement. This thin wash consists of one part dark gray paint to 18 parts water. When the wash dries, the pavement won't look like it's brand new. And there you have it. I've put the maintenance building in its place and I've installed some fuel cranes. Now it's time to do a test run to make sure the diesels will run as they should through the paved area. For this test run I'm going to use a Cato SD70 ACE. As you can see, the diesel runs smoothly and without any problems on all three tracks of the facility. I still have some weathering and detail work to do, but I'm pretty happy with this method for paving the facility. To close out this video, here's a final view of the facility from the nearby pedestrian bridge.